The number one purpose for the majority of my projects I make is to solve a problem or to serve a purpose, uh, which really isn't the case with this one. The primary goal for this project was to have some peaceful skill building shop time and then hopefully at the end of that have a functional project that will serve a purpose. Now I've had some Sapelian pecan wood on my lumber rack for a long time now so this also seemed like a really good time to use it. My goal was to use hand tools to make some hand cut dovetails for all the joinery. Uh, I, I don't really have any interest in using hand tools for the entire milling process though so I will use my power tools for it. And both of these boards are in rough sawn state, so I need to go through the full milling process starting at the miter saw station to cut the pieces to a little bit oversized rough length. Next up is to flatten one face at the jointer. And as you can see, the board that I'm working with is wider than the capacity of my jointer. So I have my guard removed and anytime you remove the guard, be careful to uh, obviously not get close to the cutter head, but also watch your shirt because it can easily get close and get pulled in. But the objective here is to basically create an 8 inch wide rabbit with the jointer and then take that jointed rabbited face and put it face down on a piece of plywood in the planer. And what this will do is transfer that flat reference face of that rabbited part of the board to the bed of the planer and allow the top side of the material to be planed flat and parallel to that jointed face. Then the plywood spacer can be removed, the boards can be flipped upside down and then finished planed to their final thickness. Now at this stage the material was looking really good. The the Sapili was very clear and nice and straight grained and the pecan was a nice contrasting white the majority of it was and it was just looking really good then it's back to the jointer to joint one of the short faces and put that freshly jointed face up against the table saw fence and cut all the pieces to their final width now I am using the crosscut sled at my table saw to cut everything to their final length and that's because all of these pieces are shorter than the minimum capacity of my miter saw station stop block. So this is a way for me to get more repeatable results on smaller pieces. Finally, the noise of the power tools can go away for a little bit and all of the hand tool work can begin. This is going to be a dovetailed shelf system. Basically two small shelves that will hang below my kitchen cabinets for kitchen utensils. And the general construction of this is going to be with the pecan on the bottom side. That's going to be a pin board and two uh, mounting boards at the top that are sapili. Those are both be pin boards as well. The vertical sapili pieces on each side will be the dovetail tail boards. To make the spacing of the dovetails really consistent, I'm using a pair of uh, dividers to lay out the dovetails. Now, if you haven't ever done this before, you're not familiar with the process. I do have a separate video specifically walking you through the process of laying out dovetails with dividers. But once they're all laid out, then I can finish marking them out with a dovetail marking gauge. And I typically don't do this because it's pretty easy to get consistent results uh, just eyeballing it with quite a bit of practice. Uh, but for this, I was going to gang cut everything, so I figured I might as well mark out at least the front board. Before making any cuts, I did use a marking gauge to establish a depth line on all of my pieces. Now all of the tail boards get a marking gauge line on all of the wide faces as well as the short faces. And the pin boards only get marked on their wide faces. And that's because the pins will be visible on the outside so you're not making any cuts on the outside of the pin boards. Now to save some time I am gang cutting all of the tail boards so I made sure that they're nice and square of one another and clamp them together and just to give my eyes a nice good visual reference I did extend the uh, cut lines on the end grain faces for all of these tail cuts. With all the tail boards held together in a vise, you'll get consistent results on all of the pieces and probably cut them out a lot faster uh, due to them all being cut at the same time. 
Now, actually cutting with a handsaw is just basic fundamentals here. Uh, you do want to make sure that you follow the line, obviously, but the most important thing here is to make sure that the saw itself is tracking forward and back perpendicular to the front face of the material. And if this doesn't happen, and if you're off on a little bit of an angle, then what you're doing is cutting compound angled uh, faces on the side of the tails. And you don't want that because nothing is going to fit right, and there's always going to be a gap somewhere. So if you make sure that the front two or three inches of your saw blade, uh, as it approaches the material, is 90 degrees to the work surface, and just cut as normal, then you'll get a nice clean perpendicular cut which is exactly what you want now to start my cuts I am using my fingers to kinda guide the saw a little bit just so that the teeth are below the surface once the teeth are below the surface then the saw will power through the cuts no problem there's many different ways to remove the waste material and in this video I'll show you two different methods the first of which is all done with a chisel and I'll hold the material tightly to the workbench with a hold fast and then I can use the chisel to chop down on the depth line gently making sure not to uh, distort this line further into the material into the workpiece and then I can pare away material from the front edge into the depth line and what this does is it kinda disconnects a couple fibers or loosens the fibers up from the bulk of the waste which makes it much easier to chop through them vertically at the depth line and remove them so uh, I'll go halfway through the material from one side and then flip the board upside down and go the other half uh, the other half way through uh, until eventually all the bulk of the waste is just disconnected and can be removed. Now the shoulder cut here uh, may not be absolutely perfect but you can put it back into a vise and clean up anything as needed, uh, clean up any of the inside corners and make sure that the bottom of the chiseled shoulder cut is at the minimum dead flat and you can also err on the side of caution by making a slight hollow on the bottom side of that shoulder cut uh, you just want to avoid having a hill there because if there's any anything sticking up then the dovetail won't seat properly before even thinking about the pin boards we, you gotta make sure everything is nice and square because if like I said if you have a compound angled cut somewhere then nothing is going to fit right. So one of these little two inch engineer squares comes in handy quite a bit and I'll show you a nice little trick with the pin boards with it as well. But, but you can use this to check and make sure all of the uh, angled faces are perpendicular to the front edge and that you don't have any high spots on the bottom of your shoulder cuts. Real quick I want to mention that getting into the inside corners of these dovetails is pretty darn difficult with a standard bench chisel and I'm not using a fancy dovetail chisel here this is actually just a regular bench chisel that I used the side of my bench grinder to round over the top edge and make the outside faces come to a nice uh, nice point near the tip and taper back gradually and what this allows is the front edge the cutting edge uh, basically has no thickness on its sides so it fits right into those inside corners of the dovetails really easy this is just an inexpensive chisel that I modified to make it uh, do what I want to do rather than uh, buying an expensive dovetail chisel specifically for this task. Another method for removing waste, which is the method that I use the vast majority of the time, is to use a coping saw or a fret saw. This is just an inexpensive $10 coping saw to remove the majority of the waste on the inside and between the pins. And then use a hand saw to remove the waste, uh, the majority of the waste again on the exterior half pins. Then you can follow that up with some chisel work to establish the shoulder cut and get everything nice and neat just like I previously stated with the last method. To save some time I skipped ahead and cut the rest of the tail pieces. Now the bottom side where the shelves attach will be a full row of tails and the top side is two small pieces of uh, tail section that have a half pin on either side. The geometry of the tail boards needs to be transferred to the pin boards and to make this easy I set the height of my pin board to the height of my plane on its side. Then I can use the plane to elevate the tail board on the appropriate height 
above the pin board and then use a marking knife to transfer the geometry exactly to the pin board. Cutting the pins is pretty much the exact same process as cutting the tails. However, there's two things you need to be aware of. Number one, cut on the waist side of your layout lines so that you also remove the layout lines. And number two, the saw has to be cutting exactly perpendicular to the end grain. That's not necessarily vertical because if your material is not held in a vise vertically, then you're not going to be cutting vertically. So to aid in this process and make sure that you are indeed cutting perpendicular, uh, once the teeth of the saw are below the surface so they don't interfere with the square, you can use an engineer square, uh, the blocky side of it, to slide up against the saw blade and give you an exact perpendicular reference face to ride the side of the saw blade up against and this will help you track exactly perpendicular to the end grain of your material. All of the waste material can be removed in the exact same way as it was with the uh, pin boards. And then also don't forget to check everything with a square because if everything is nice and square as it should be, uh, there's nothing interfering on the bottom of the inside corners and you cut exactly where you should have cut on the layout lines then you shouldn't really need a test fit it should just go together nice and perfectly the first time the rest of this project is a lot of repetition just making sure that the joints are cut in the exact same way and that they fit together securely uh, as they should and assembly was very uneventful, which is a good thing. Just a little bit of glue to lock everything together once everything is properly seated. And then from there, uh, I could clean up all of the joints with a couple hand planes and a card scraper. I used a can of satin spray lacquer for the finish. And to install it, I had to drill a couple uh, mounting holes. These holes in the small pieces are pre-drilling for the screws and then I also had to drill through the the shelf material uh, with the smallest bit that would allow access for the driver uh, during installation. This was a quarter inch bit and luckily it doesn't uh, show up too bad on the final product. The final resting place for these shelves is right below the cabinets right next to my stove and their purpose is to uh, house some commonly used utensils and while I do really like the way that these look and I really like the actual function of this project uh, I wish I would have maybe used a different wood for the shelf because some of the pins uh, kind of blend with the sapili a little bit I was hoping for a nice high uh, contrast that really stuck out uh, but I'm very satisfied with the project and I'm very pleased to have some uh, of the utensils right next to the stove but not take up countertop space this um, actually is a very functional project that I think I'm going to enjoy going forward if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one and if you'd like more information as always uh, be sure to check out the website article it is linked in the description below. Uh, thanks for watching you guys take care and have a great day.